Okay. Uh, I'm just going to skip the intro and just jump right into it for this one. Uh, topic seems sure. too sensitive for me. So, um, this is Robin's Wish, which is a movie that came out, I want to say, about a month ago. Uh, it's been kind of my list to check out for a while, so I'm glad we finally got around to it. Uh, for those who don't know what this movie is or have don't have any context for it, this is basically a documentary that uh, basically set, it's, feels designed kind of set the record straight in terms of Robin Williams and how he eventually passed and what, bas- what basically killed him. Um, well, also celebrating his life in the process. Um, so, uh, it's nice to have an answer instead of speculation. Yeah. So, like, this one kind of puts all the rumors and all the different stories to bed. It's like definitively, this is what it was. I think it was like, something like Lewis body uh, dementia or something like that. Uh, Louis body dementia is is what they they called it to in in the film. Oh, I know my lighting is weirdly blue. I apologize for that. It is in that weird stage of day where the sun has not gone down far enough for the lights in my room to do all the work. So, um, I, <laughs> you have better lighting than I do. I just tried to. Oh, uh, I just opened a few of my drapes, so I'm not mm-hmm. engrossed in darkness. <laughs> I, I, you look pretty bright on my end. So, <laughs> no, <wait. Okay. laughs> um, but anyway. Uh, so I guess it's kind of context on our own personal feelings about Robin Williams as a person and all that stuff. Uh, like Robin Williams for me was definitely like up there, like I might all like up there with Stanley and Mr. Rogers in terms of like people that I idolized, people that I uh, were a big, big, big inspiration for me growing up. Um, half the reason I talk as fast as I do and I uh, make as many jokes as I do is because I was largely inspired by Robin Williams and his style of comedy. Um, and I found him fascinating just as a person. I think my I still have uh, the behind the, the actor studio Robin Williams interview on DVD. Uh, oh, you you found it on on DVD. Awesome. Yeah, uh, all by itself, apparently. Uh, uh, I I will have to see if I, I can find that because uh, years ago um, I I I asked my my mom to uh, record uh, it on on VHS so I still have a VHS of it with the commercials uh, uh, it's somewhere just I guess it became a, <laughs> a big thing all its own that it's released it on uh, like it's its own separate episode of, uh, separate from all the other ones so like all right cool I'll take it well the the riffs that he 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 went on especially with the the scarf when he was demonstrating uh, his free flowing thinking process uh just always cracked me up like um whenever i i i wanted a good laugh i would would pop that that tape in and um and it was not just an interview he he gave a performance for the those students that that day oh yeah i think about 20 minutes in before he finally got his first question in uh, yes <laughs> 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 How much money ha- have we raised on day one? <laughs> <laughs> day one. Uh. <laughs> yes. Um, I. Robin Williams was uh, one of those entertainers that um, that always had the ability to make audience members like myself uh, laugh and smile and think, and I was a big, big fan of him for, for that reason. Um, a good chunk of that was because of his, his inside the actor's studio interview, but I also, That's good. yeah. Um, I also, uh, liked him in various films. Uh, I actually liked him in the original Jumanji film. I, uh, Ooh, that that's, was a classic. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Was that a thing people didn't like before? I always got on the impression everyone always liked that movie. Uh, uh it, it's like you said, cult classic status. It uh, um, what wasn't uh, critically praised, but uh, it was a family film that was, no, was shown on on TV a lot. I know it terrified me as a kid. So I only watched it like two times, maybe. It's <laughs> like Spider. Uh, Thank you. Um, it's so like, uh, um, yeah. but I. Mean, I I I very much admired and appreciated him as a person and and his talent and work. Um, when I I went to a con two years ago, um, 
Kevin Conroy um, was doing a, a Q and A, the the voice of Bruce Wayne and Batman from the '90s animated yeah. series. Uh, for those who don't know, and he told some of these great stories about how he was Robin Williams's roommate at Juilliard, and and he would would hear Robin practicing his his characters and these different voices, and apparently when Kevin Conroy's uh, date or girlfriend was was over. She uh, she nudged him and asked, "I think there's a family in trouble <laughs> next door. We should should really do something about it." And, and, and Kevin Conroy was all sleepy. Like, no, it's just Robin. Go back to sleep. Is <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, a roommate or is a neighbor? Roommate at okay, at, okay. Uh, at at Juilliard. The the documentary. Uh. Uh, um, well, they didn't get Kevin Conroy to be, uh, be interviewed for the the documentary. They got got interviews from one of his, uh, his close friends fr uh, from his his Juilliard days. But that's that's just a story that that I um, learned again at a con I went to two years ago. Mm -hmm. That was another fun piece of of insight. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, it's it. You can easily surmise that I'm a fan, and I was was very sad to hear that. Oh he yeah, passed. that one broke my heart. And it's, it's we were watching this movie now, and it's in like 2014. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like that happened yeah. six years ago. Yeah, I was 20 when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> That was uh, a year before I graduated officially. Yeah. Oh God, that's weird thinking about. But yeah, like it's that nice. one, love the Stanley one. Those one, those are the two like ones that really just destroyed me emotionally when that happened. Yeah. Um, and it's very surreal revisiting it now. Here's documentary. It's a very, very well made documentary. I should point out. It like, is technically wise. It's kind of hard to look at this movie objectively though, considering like the personal connection you have with the source material. Um, or the subject matter, subject matter, better word. Um, and so you almost kind of have to, like, you almost have to, it's hard to take the emotions out of it to look at it in an objective way. Um, as like, as a documentary, as like structurally, um, I would say I kind of wish it balanced more of what he accomplished in life versus how he died. Um, like there's certain elements that I like, do so, like there's a lot of celebration of his life and his genius and everything he accomplished and everything he did all that stuff um, but I almost feel like the focus was too much on granted this is a nitpick I still highly recommend this movie yes uh, so let me make it clear before I continue my sentence here this is me like if I'm looking at it purely objectively this is what I would change um, is like I promise it put too much emphasis on the disease that eventually killed him and that degradation and I kind of wish it had a better balance between the celebration and the defeat. Um, not that both subjects aren't worth exploring with talking about because I didn't even know Lewis, like, Lewis body this, uh, dementia was even a thing until I saw this movie. Same. And it's definitely a point where it's like, okay, this is a rare disease and it clearly is a disastrous one and it's worth like, looking into and like kind of like... Uh, the ice bucket challenge brought uh, awareness to that one disease at the time, although I'm ashamed that I don't know what the disease was. Uh, um, I think uh, the ice bucket challenge brought awareness to uh, ALS or Luke Gehrig's disease. That was it. Uh, yes, you were absolutely right. Uh, so I appreciate in that way. And so I feel like the larger purpose of the movie wasn't necessarily to celebrate his life so much as bookend it, if that makes sense. It Yes, that does make sense, and this movie does do a good job at bookending it because anybody who was a fan like like you and I already knew the the celebration of his life and and career, but we didn't know the details of how or why his life ended, mm -hmm. which the, this this documentary answers those questions very adequately yeah and uh for me personally like dementia is one of my top five ways of like ways i'd be terrified to go um because i like there's something about the idea of being trapped inside your own mind that absolutely terrifies me 
Yes, it's a, a horrifying thing. And um, I I had a an aunt who uh, got Alzheimer's, and and I I don't don't have uh, any dementia myself. Thank thank God. But uh, I I did grow up uh, with a different kind of uh, uh, neurological hindrance that robbed me of pieces of of my life whenever I fell unconscious and flopped around like a fish uncontrollably. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so I I appreciated uh, that they got these neurological experts who knew what the science of what they were talking about to contribute to this the, the, this documentary and when his his wife mentioned that that they were were going to um for tests or a, ch- a checkup uh, at UCSF uh that that kind of hit close to home yeah. for me yeah. cuz um the epilepsy center at UCSF is where I went for for my surgery when when I was 14 so uh, I know that they know their stuff there yeah uh, so, so uh this this hit close to home in in terms of uh, uh medical credibility I can see that yeah. oh, there's a bit of an excellent sorry uh I I have my I have this fan under my Laptop. Uh, I can hear it right back into this uh, microphone. Uh, it's not that bad. Okay, I just got to talk quieter. That's me. <laughs> you know, hard Sorry, to... it's it's either that or my computer crashing because <laughs> I can't o- open my windows. Fair enough. Well, it's you not. Want, you, probably... you want me to to mute myself when I'm not talking? Um, it's okay. It's, it's okay right now. It's just when I'm talking. Really, it's when I was talking really loud. I know it really came back loudly, but right now it's okay. Uh, technical issues, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. <laughs> see i'm sure but anyway um no like i would like what i appreciate about this movie is that it does um accurately describe what it's like not only to see it happening but it actively conveys what it feels like not that i know but i know but um this is where i have to go into my own personal kind of history here is i knew a guy i knew a man in community college it was carol briggs brilliant man uh, but when i like i did a couple plays with them had the best laugh i've ever heard in my life um, like he's one, of, he's one of those theater people that you he always have like brightly colored purple sweaters and like the dorkiest hat you can find. Uh, jolly old man. And uh, whenever you you like you're in a comedy the show, you heard a laugh it's like up oh, Carol's here. It was one of those. Um, but uh, the last stage of his life, uh, he had a brain tumor that he told nobody about, so nobody knew. But you can see it kind of start affecting him. To the point where, like, he was missing lines, or he's saying the wrong lines at the last at the last second, and then like there, like uh, one of the actors there, I think his name was Vincent, was kind of on hand up on his side at all times, kind of cover for him, because uh, they just want to let him do, kind of just kind of let him do his last show. We all just kind of thought he was having like stuff from Alzheimer's or like uh, early on stage dementia or something like that, and it wasn't until we all heard that he died, it was like, oh no, he had a brain tumor. We're like, wait, what? And it's that same kind of thing where, like, you know something's wrong, but you don't really know what, like, do you say something? Do you not say something? Is it your place? There's a lot of awkward feelings around it. You don't want to, like, invade their privacy or anything along those lines. And then you find that too much later, and it's like, what the fuck? Like, even now that you know, there's still nothing you could have done. And that, I don't know if that makes it better or worse. Uh, and I can understand and respect... Um... The desire of a person in that situation to try to live as close to a normal of, of life as possible in, instead of being questioned and poked and prodded constantly. Yeah. Um, but even then, it, go, it goes to the question, like, that may be the initial intention, or at least in the case of Ron Williams reading, had a, he had no clue at all. He assumed something was wrong, um, which for me is worse. That would, like, yes. that would be horrifying. Um, yeah. And uh, everyone else around him in that same state of not knowing, not even knowing that there's something going on, even though, how do I phrase this? Uh, like, in, this, in the context of this movie, like, Robin knows that something is wrong. He just doesn't have a name for it, doesn't know what's going on. He thinks he's going insane. 
by everyone else, but he's right through he's that part right, well, everyone else can sense something is wrong, but it's harder to tell because they're hiding it, if that makes, if that makes more sense. And uh, this documentary makes a point a few times of uh, saying that he was a genius, and because he was a genius, it, this... It affected him much more than uh, And this disease uh, um, was harder to uh, to pinpoint and well it's like it's, it's not something you think of like uh, something obscure is like Lewis body uh, dementia it's like you just don't think of it the thought doesn't enter your head no um, and he was able to battle through it for as long as he he did because he was such an exceptional thinker and 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 person. Yeah, and uh, like again, his mind was irreplaceable. It's still unlike anything we've seen before or since. And there's never going to be yes. another one like it. Um, there's going to be emulators. God knows they tried that with the goddamn Aladdin movie. Um, but, not the same. No, it's not. Um, sorry, I got distracted by something. Uh, but it just it just there's such a tragedy to it and it's so heartbreaking to again watch something not only that you love and appreciate but is like caught in such a position of losing what you know they value the most or at least as much you can understand it um because i'm not gonna sit here and like pretend i knew the guy or knew him enough to, like any of that bullshit but i can only just, like but just based on the testimonies everyone provides to have the gift that he valued which was like performing and making people laugh and all that stuff kind of robbed from him because it's something that was completely beyond his control and not even knowing that that's what it is is like that's got to be a circle of hell which is why it's it's probably why he ended up uh, taking the route that that he took but even then you can kind of argue that even that wasn't really his choice from this way no. down. It's like this kind of thing robbed him of all autonomy um, and any sense of self and any sense of control in like longer and longer bursts. Um, so even by that standard, uh, the fact that he did end his life through suicide, you can make a, a strong argument that's like that wasn't even his choice to make. Um, because by that Ghana it advanced to a point where there is no coming there is like there is no coming back and there's no way of controlling it. Um, and it's one of those of, things I don't know if there's a like it's something I have to look into. Sorry, I mean to interrupt you. Um, and this is something I'm very curious to kind of learn following up on this is like if there you can even detect it while they're alive. Um, because I got the impression not yet. Because it's kind of like uh, that that mental disorder that affects uh, athletes. Um, I forget the term of it. Uh, I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comments. But uh, it's basically... Oh, the, the one uh, from the concussion movie? Yes, that one. Uh, where, like, you, there's no way to detect it while they're alive. The only way you can tell it even happened is when you, like, take a look at the brain and the damage it, it endured after they die. Uh, that's the only, like, that's why, you know, donating your body for science, especially for athletes, can be very valuable because it teaches you more about the disease. Mm -hmm. uh, or not disease, disorder. Well, I don't know the proper terminology for that. I want to say disorder. I could be wrong. The uh, medical condition in question. Yeah. Uh, well, like, diseases and disorders are kind of classified differently in that yes. way. Um, but, yeah, like, this one just kind of brings all those memories back, like, God, we lost a, we lost a big one. And it still breaks my heart. Yeah, um, after I, I, like, when I, I was watching this the other night, I, I cried tears of sadness and tears of empathy and um, at least one tear of, of joy that, that at least he, we have answers now to, to this particular the question. Love, the Mary Love Advice for, like, fans or family, hopefully, I don't know. Like, it's not my place to say, and I would feel terrible for projecting that onto anyone. Six years later, there's still parts of it just doesn't feel real in a lot of ways. Yeah. I, I just thank God that uh, bits and pieces of his 
his brilliance are recorded for us to continue to enjoy. Um, yeah, pretty much. Like, I wasn't always, I didn't love all his stand up, I didn't love all his movies, but like, you cannot replace that heart, that passion, um, and just that love for humanity that he projected into everything he ever did. Um, and, and that, that's his, his titular wish from. Uh, from what I, I can gather from the end of this documentary is that he 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 wanted uh, to encourage people to not not be afraid yeah mm-hmm. and uh, like like that's the one thing I always kind of admire about people like him like Mr. Rogers or like Bob Ross or anything like those is uh, like there is that w- there's that strong desire to just bring out the good in everyone uh, while not while also kind of hiding your own stuff, which isn't always a good thing. Let me be clear. Um, but it's that willingness to expose your damaged parts so other people can find joy in their own that I heavily admire. Um, in a way that's really difficult to convey. Yeah, and uh, especially in show business, it's tremendously discouraged to share your your, your weaknesses. I, um, at my community college, I took an acting for the camera class, and uh, uh, in in the initial class, we we kind of did uh, individual on camera interviews uh, with our instructor, and I. I, I revealed um, that I had childhood epilepsy and uh, my, my, my teacher advised me, no matter how important that is to you or how much of a core of, of yourself that is, you don't want to advertise that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, and I just did on, again, on, on the internet. <laughs> I feel like things have changed a little bit since. Um, not as much as I would like. Um, but I feel like we are heading in a direction where we're more accepting of those kind of things that we used to be. It's, that's what I'm hoping. Uh, maybe that's naive. Maybe that's kind of. I honestly think we need that kind of idealism these days. Uh, idealistic, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, at least that's like what I personally hope to build towards, which is, I know is like pompous for me to say. Uh, we, we need that. It, 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 for for every negative force and comment said, we we need its opposite to counterbalance it. Um, yeah, like that's uh, that's a big reason why I even started like doing the editorial stuff on a regular basis um, was to uh, attempt to convey that purpose. Um, and a lot of those inspirations do come from like Rob, like a big part of it was Robin Williams uh, is the fact that kind of personal advocacy not just for like social issues but for the individual um there's like you know, like he spent a lot of time in like iraq and afghanistan uh doing shows for the troops he had a massive respect for the troops uh, he, he also worked with uh, billy crystal and whoopi goldberg and, and other uh, talented performers to raise money for comic relief they they did it for years or like uh, there, there's that. There's also uh, like the, the story they bring up in the movie where he talks to the uh, soldier with the amputees, um, and he says he talks for, talks to him for an hour and a half. And he basically afterwards he confesses to like his handler at the time is like, well, he does like that was a tough one. He didn't know how close I came to some things he was feeling, and that's kind of what I'm talking about. Is more like like every community that like, community person I have admired the most are the ones I always find like find their pain to help others deal with theirs yes uh, it's always a trait I've always massively admired and always try to emulate um, it's it's a a root of empathy yeah and I think I like and Rod Williams was so good at that he like yes he, or at least he made it look easy uh, even though I doubt it was, but that's also kind of a trick, isn't it? Like, you make it look easy so that everyone else around you doesn't feel as scared about it. Well, that, that goes back to his acting talent, too. He was acting whenever he, he did that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I think for me, like, now that we kind of had the book and documentary, what I would like to see in a few years' time when kind of more time has passed 
and we're kind of allowed to, like more information comes out. We're kind of allowed to get the bigger picture of who he was. I would kind of like kind of like what they did for uh, uh, Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Why not? Uh, Won't you be my neighbor? Yeah. The uh, Mr. Rogers documentary, uh, where they just kind of took like uh, almost like a blanket look at his life from beginning to end and the influences from those times, rather than focusing on one chapter of it. That I would be very curious to see. Same. Um, and I hope that I hope they make that down the line. But for the time being, I'm very glad I made the time to watch this. Uh, he wasn't my personal heroes, and um, it's I guess it's it's good to have answers in a way that's respectful to everyone involved. Uh, that teaches you what you need to know. That doesn't cross any boundaries. Um, it 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 knew how to tell subject material very well. Yes, and I appreciate that uh, his his widow has a cause to channel her her grief and energy into in spreading awareness of this not highly advertised, not very well known condition or, or disease. So <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, that's all I can really think of anything I had to say about this. There's anything else uh, that I left out that you wanted to bring up? No, I think we we pretty much covered it. So, uh, sorry if if this isn't as an in in depth or entertaining discussion. <laughs> oh, I think we got, I think we covered some good ground here, Sarah. Don't knock yourself down. Okay. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. uh, I spent like like an hour and a half talking about the alt like the far right the other day. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started to to watch that. I may have to finish that another time. <laughs> but uh, like I said, there, um, I kind of need a little bit more positivity right now than than, than uh, so much focusing on hate groups. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know you're feeling. Um, so I guess up in Sarah Williams' uh, comedy special, if you got the time. Um, yep. So- I think that's all we have to say about this. And I'm sorry, this one's about like a person, a person who died that was like cherished by millions. Like I think, I think it's fair to say we don't need to be funny for this one. <laughs> no, he. You can can look up clips of of him him being being funny. Uh, he was was very good at it. And <laughs> and uh, yeah, like like I said, this hit hit close to home. Not just because he made me laugh and. And I was a fan and in awe of his goodness and, and genius, but be, because I have like had my own experiences with uh, uh, brain conditions and while epilepsy is, is much more common and while I haven't had a seizure in over 20 years, thank God, Congratulations. Uh, it I do empathize and understand how tremendously brain issues can affect one's life from mm-hmm. from the inside out. Yeah, it just yeah. internally destroys you. Yes. Uh, like I, we'll end on this little uh, nugget of information for those curious. I actually do have a artist rendition of Rob Williams that is framed on my water cooler in my apartment. Uh, that has one of his more well-known quotes uh, where it's like, we're all given a little spark of madness. You mustn't lose it. So I, that's the one I look at every day. Um, that's a good one. Yeah. So uh, if you like this kind of video, go watch my uh, One Fear Neighbor review because that's me having a full-blown existential crisis. So. <laughs> and if if you if you like uh, that, I, I recommend watching this, this documentary, Robin's Wish, and yeah. uh, 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 won't you be my my neighbor? Which is uh, uh, my my favorite film from 2018. It's it's easily my favorite documentary. I've watched it over a dozen like over a dozen times. So. Yeah, it it it's it's one of those those documentaries that will will leave you feeling good, uh, well, just like uh, like the real yeah. Mister Rogers. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you. That was rude. Um, it's okay. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think it's all we have for this one. Uh, the last movie on our agenda is Antebellum, which I think we're gonna check out over the weekend. Um, so we'll see how that goes. In the meantime, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, oh, do all that. What? Oh, 
I think I lost her. Uh, well, we made it to the end there, so that was pretty good. Uh, Sarah, if you're watching this, thank you for joining me today, and uh, I will talk to all you guys later. Bye-bye.